What is up, YouTube? And welcome back to another episode of Factory Town. And we've jumped a little bit ahead now. Uh, no major changes per se, just a little bit in, in terms of tidying up. So time has passed. Uh, additional additional uh, houses placed. So 56 out of 56 now. We ended on 46. We just leveled up um, the happiness to level 8. Now pushing level 9 though. 570 out of 750. So just trying to work a few more things out uh, by logistics of getting things over belts and over shoots, etc, etc. This actually, though, is a path. A path specifically designed so that we can make these bloody pickaxes, finally. If we can then get them carted in over these roads and into that town hall uh, we can then use them to make the mines that i've been after and i think that is now the next step i want to get to replacing people for mines getting mines on all the resources the resources then are produced much quicker uh, much more efficient and we can start really cranking out some goody goodies now i have just chucked a random bridge there i use it a lot and i'm sick of making it and you can copy and pasta or copy and paste as normal people call it um the, them in so what I've done is I've just copied and pasted it over there out of the way and then if I want to use a bridge in the future I can just yoink it and paste it where I need it some standard caravans I never know how many I need so I just make them up as I go along but I want you to pick up any old crap from that factory and send it to storage the factory should be making us some metal belts which of course are quite significant and you can see we have started making the wheels on the research that we're at now we are 10 out of 40 we haven't made any rails but i'll throw them out uh, trains are very good but at the minute i'm happy to use belts as we get further out on the map though, i'll probably start using trains because i'm expecting them to be a lot faster and i think they only use uh coal right so and as always the bridges uh, i'm doubling them up because they will get stuck they're that dumb um, so doubling up the bridges so that if they meet on a bridge they'll just go around each other and continue without having to go all the way back and rinse and repeat it's just yeah you see they get a bit discombobulated when they bump into each other very strange that's another thing that trains don't do right so let's try out some of these new fandango belts the metal ones you can see the speed there of the cloth belt whoa holy crap yeah that's a bit faster still slower than the chute but obviously the chute can't be used for that resource anyway so that's quite irrelevant and belts can go up down left right keep your hand on a and press start uh, that's a cheat from sonic i think sorry but yeah so we've got the belts coming in now we have the capability of making the wheels this uh, is making the belts for us so we can do a bit of upgrading i really do need to get the pickaxes i thought it was at the time i was doing the same thing if i'm honest but clearly i'm only interested in the metal belts for now uh, they're not required for an upgrade as yet i think that they're the, technically they're the next upgrade but you can see um that this machine shop is working hard to make the items that we need we don't actually need the wheels it requires two iron uh sorry two ingots to make the wheels but one to make the gears so that's why it's making gears faster than it can make the wheels so buying more land as we've established and the comments corrected me on it sorry correct me on agreed with me on it is no benefit or disbenefit to doing it it's cheap it's easy and we can afford it 40k so i've actually found over here a really nice patch of stone loads of it coal loads of it iron loads of it so i'm just going to throw in a couple of shoots one for each uh, and get a load of people ripping all of that out and starting on it. And then as soon as we get the mines that I keep going on about, um, we will obviously get them on there instead. But that is a lot of coal, iron and stone to move us forward. I just need to do a bit of flattening. Again, flattening uses red coins. And we have plenty of those, 67,800 of those. Uh, 980 blue coins, which is coming from the medicines... Uh, but I, if I'm not mistaken, I have yet. Yeah, so I stopped. 
I am making medicine or growing medicine, but at the minute we are using it for research, which is why you can see we've got 1,100 natural nature res uh, research points. Um, but we're not actually using it as medicaments and then selling it at an apothecary for the people. Yet. Make sure shoots always go downhill. They cannot go uphill, not even one block. Even if you send them down 100 blocks, it will not go up one block. Don't worry like that. Um, it's very physic driven um but yeah as long as it stays flat it will keep its momentum forever so yeah screw physics hallelujah we're there right so we are now just getting this set up there's more wood coming in same it's the same wood line uh coming in to make planks the planks are going to go over to the workshop the workshop is already receiving iron from the forges there two of which are being ran that one on the left is being ran from that um new find we found where there was a huge hill of it they then go in and produces axes and pickaxes though we actually only want pickaxes because the pickaxes 10 of which are required for each of the mines so we'll get them made offloaded and sent into storage we can then start actually building the mines Boosting it as much as I can to make sure we get these cranked out ASAP. Not the most expensive thing in the world, but you can see the resources going in. Loads and loads of, um, of iron being consumed there. Three iron per coal, is it? Or four iron per coal. So I've added the pickaxes to the top. The options you can see, I've got 24 at the minute, so that's enough for two. So I'm going to start building them. Now, I'm building this one just here to figure out uh, what it is or isn't and how it works. But predominantly, the first one I'm actually going to build is going to be for coal. So you need to put it near the resources. You can see that coal patch just here. So instead of having all of them roads and people running around it, slowly achieving something, I can rip all of that up replace it for a mine and we'll have a very very efficient amount of coal coming out of that mine up until it runs out or we don't need it anymore straight out as such and there you go that looks a bit disappointing but don't panic all you need to do is that and there it comes consistent wonderful 10 people that was more than what was there but obviously it's also more efficient uh, and they're not all over the place as well. 31 now, so I need to go around all of the areas where we're actually mining and replace them for these mines now. We can build three more because we've got 38. So we are going to continue to make them until I've finished making, or sorry, building the mines. You see, all of them people can get deleted. All of this crap can be deleted out. Um, and then you just have one line per resource. If they're the same resource, I suppose, I suppose you could link them together. It's up to you. Um, but... Yeah, you just get a mine in and you, you're good to go. From what I can tell, and as far as I'm aware, and please do correct me if I'm wrong, the range that is around the mine is where it will pick up from, and it's pretty obvious because it's highlighting it. Anything outside of that won't be included. So if you have a massive batch, you may need to move the mine to the other side when you've mined it all, because it will use the resource. It will dissipate, disappear. It won't last forever. And as I said, over here where the massive patches are that I mentioned, they are now all mined up as well. Removed the people. I had to jiggery poker the middle one, that one there where the coal is. Flatten the ground a little bit to make it fit. Um, but it will work. Now, although that the may overlap other resources, I've told it to only do like coal and iron and stone. So you can see pretty slow, but then you just whack them up to 10 people and they soon start throwing out more. You can, of course, increase that dramatically by using the yellow coin booster and then in the future, probably red coin or the uh, steam boosters. But for now, you can see it's a back, it's a backlog, so it's not required. That is actually a floor higher than what I thought, which is why it's not working. But I can, of course, fix that by either lowering the mine down by flattening the floor or just simply putting in a ramp, like so. And there we go. Stone, coal, and iron. More coal over here. Resource-wise, we're doing well now. Plenty of resources coming in, not too shabby. Okay, so I've just gone round and bought a 
massive amount of squares. Not all of them. I will be doing that soon because we've established that there's no reason not to. It's 500 coins per and of course we can easily afford it with 60k in the bank. Um, what I want though is a massive area to do my next huge upgrade of farms. Where I built that other lot, I'm probably going to build, I don't know, 10 or so. We have found gold finally, but not really any use for it as such. But what I need to do is find an area where I want to build and flatten it, which is going to be expensive for the red coins, but also necessary. And I think here behind the forest is where we're going to go. So I could delete all these resources now. It's probably a bit cringe to do that. Uh, but I'm never going to use them, realistically. I have the infinite wood already that I've got. Then berry trees, I've got that. The, the, the resource itself, although you can use it, I'm not going to. And it's a lot easier for me to see what I'm doing and setting things up if I just flatten it. Now, I am a Minecraft player, so this is how you do in Minecraft, right? Especially in modern Minecraft. You make in massive, enormous areas, perfectly flat, and then you build ridiculous structures on them. Or at least I do. Uh, Minecraft season coming soon. Just a bit of advertising there. Anyway, flattening all this so I don't have to worry about the levels. And then we need to get a crap ton of farms on it. So maybe I meant to say 18, not 10. I don't know yet whether this is going to be what I need. But for now, it's just how I've set it up so I know it will fit. Now, producing enough... What do you call it? Fertiliser, yes. For that, I've got no idea. But one thing is for sure is we are going to be using a lot of uh, <laughs> fields. Seeds, gold, etc. Now they are all of the food mills which of course do the next stage from the grain. So if I do that, you can see the fields or the farms will go directly into those. That should make animal feed, right? And a lot of it. Then we can have loads of pastures in front of that. And then we can pick what uh, resources we want. Whether it be chicken, eggs, beef, or whatever else comes from the pastures. I can't remember. But we're not going to be struggling, that's for sure. So something like that. Got the crops down, can't quite, we don't have the uh, enough fertilizer to be putting the farm tiles down on that just yet. Um, it only holds 200 per, so it's going to take a while to do it. I will do it, obviously, but it just takes a bit of time. Next to each of the fields has its own food factory and then its own pasture. Um, once they're up and running, I'm not sure if or how much it's going to be, but we're certainly going to give it a go. So you can see there, putting out the tiles and then it will stock up up to 200 again and we'll do the next section and the next section we'll just keep moving across slowly but surely now how much water do we need <laughs> yeah it's i'm not sure if this is excessive let me know how you how you do this cuz i'm seeing this as instead of just doing bit by bit i'm going overkill to make sure that a resource is in place forever and that i don't have to do it hopefully ever again so with enough of these wells down, I was going to try and build more, but of course, as you saw there, I ran out of, I think it was stone blocks to build any more. But we need to make sure that all of these farms are watered. Uh, some of the pastures as well may require water, uh, but we'll do that when I'm actually ready to set them up to figure out what I'm actually going to be using them for. So making sure all of the fields are staffed and they're set up to produce the goods as soon as they're ready to go. We're going to go into the pastures now. So the first one we're going to go for eggs, I guess, or raw chicken. The idea really is what can we sell? We can sell all of it, so eggs. We're going to go for the raw stuff because it's easy, but it's also beneficial. So that first pasture there, max it on staff and that will make eggs. The next one should be raw chicken. Uh, the next one will, of course, be beef, I guess. We don't need to do the wool. Because we have cotton farms doing that for us. We don't need the leather because everything that we're using 
We're using cloth, sorry, instead of leather for everything so far. Although we could potentially do that as an additional crop uh, or a purchase for goods. That's the word I'm looking for. Additional goods. It's not really warranted the effort, I don't feel, at this time. To get all of these items over, though, to where they need to be sold, and that is the food market, the predominantly is the main one. Um, there is a lot of things in the way and a lot of paths or belts I need to build to make it happen. And that is what I'm trying to do now without damaging any other infrastructures on the items that we need. 225 pickaxes, by the way. So that's 22 mines we can build. So, yeah, it looks like I'm uh, just reorganizing this to get a couple of belts, extra belts going underneath the bridge for these guys to continue to move their items. I really should get them doing the wheels and the trains. Being on research level four is a bit silly. Okay, so a lot of wood, a lot of belts, and I just need to try and see how much of this will fit on the belt. All of these need to be exported onto some form of belt. None of it can use the chutes. Um, you can see that first one there is eggs. Now, it's not a good gauge to use the very beginning because as soon as you connect them, of course, they're going to be backed up if they've been running, which they should have been, like the eggs and the chicken there. So as you can see, the chicken, sorry, the eggs is now, it's an egg and a gap, an egg and a gap, an egg and a gap. And that gap can be used for something else. So that's actually not too bad. You can see it's going to go up and over those two chutes there and in directly to the kitchen to be sold. And it's not a kitchen, it's a food market. So you can see we've got chicken and eggs coming out there. Now the eggs are struggling a little bit. The amount of volume is dependent on how much food we give them. And I believe it is one animal feed per egg and two animal feed per chicken. So I am, as you can see, immediately going to throw in a second line using the metal belts, which are the fastest we have so far to try and get them goods up there as soon as possible. There is still beef to go on this line as well. Um, that I don't believe has started to be produced just yet. There we go. Now we have two doing exactly the same, so we can split that out nicely. It seems that the chicken and the eggs are managing to coexist on one of the lines by themselves. So this pasture, which is producing the beef, uh, and technically uh, manure as well, or fertilizer as well as beef, um, will be on its own line, and then the ones after that too. So getting water in there, because they require water and animal feed, they then produce steak, raw steak, and fertilizer. And there they go, the steak's on the line. Now, of course, there is a chance that it's going to lead need a lot more. I mean, look at it. It's The gaps between the steaks are quite significant. So it's using, what is it, four? Yes, four food, animal feed per steak. So I am maxing it out in terms of leveling it up stacking out the workers i'm also maxing out the food mill um to make sure we throw crap ton of animal feed into that cow pasture to give us as much juicy beef steaks as we can possibly get now i can of course increase the production even more so by taking another shoot out of the field into the food mill um, but i've not quite got there yet but there you can see raw chicken, raw eggs, and raw beef going nicely into the settlement, making everybody happy. Happiness at 663 and climbing slightly at, a five, at 750. So we're very close to level 9 on happiness, which is good to see. And we still have plenty of farms. That, uh, well, we've got a couple of pastures we're not using, actually. Um, and there's still 12 farms behind that we've not even started with yet. So... The amount of space we've taken here is definitely susceptible and sufficient to what we aim to do. What will we use these for? That is a good question. Of course, the answer is milk. So that we can have milk. Because all the milk we're producing at the minute is being turned into cheese. Now, you can make butter um, or just give them the milk. And I think I'll just pipe in the milk, right? And that's why I've ripped out the conveyor belts because there's no need for them because the milk will be transferred through a liquid pipe. 
And there is the said liquid pipe. So you can see now pear juice, apple juice, berry juice and milk. Loads of it all heading towards the city and making them very, very happy. Well fed and well watered people or nuggets as I'm deciding to call them. And I think another step forward in the progress of the civilization, especially now we finally have the soddy mines that I've been talking about. But do let me know how you uh, like to expand. I'm a bit aggressive, but at least now all of these fields and the ones behind it will be very vital and used moving forward. Every single one of them, no doubt. But we are at time now, so I am going to end the episode here. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like. Don't forget to subscribe for more. Take care. Goodbye.